mortgage vacation. Now with COVID, you don't have to make a mortgage payment for 12 months, right? That's what I heard in the news. Isn't that correct? It's wrong. And I'm going to tell you why. You should be very careful before you start missing your mortgage payments. The last people you don't want to pay and you want to miss payments on is a mortgage company. And I'm going to explain that why. Before I go into that, take a moment to subscribe, like, comment, let us know what you think. Let us know what you want to know. We'd be glad to share. I'm Eddie Blanco. I'm the broker of Stratwell, and I welcome you to our page. So where does all start? FHFA, the Federal Housing Finance Administration. Those are the people who govern over Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and HUD. They told Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and HUD, hey, with all this COVID mess, you're going to have to work out with your borrowers and let them have time to make their payments. Give them six months, and if they need even more, give them up to a year to not make their mortgage payments. FHFA puts that requirement down on Fannie, Freddie, and HUD, and that's just the way it's going to be, but it's not so simple. Let me explain. Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and HUD, they're the agencies that provide liquidity to the marketplace. Well, what does that mean? They buy mortgages from banks. They say, hey, banks, here's the kind of borrowers we like. We like borrowers with this credit score, with this type of home, with this type of loan to value, or with this type of down payment. And if you get us a loan like that, with that kind of borrower, we'll buy all the notes you can make. So the banks go out and lend mortgages. Do out, sign up people, right? Fantastic. They send it and they sell it to Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and F HUD through FHA. So I'm super oversimplifying the process, but I wanted to make it simple to understand for the average person. So. Now, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and HUD are the owner of your mortgage. But wait a second, I don't make my mortgage payments to Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and HUD. Who are they? I make my mortgage payments to ABC Bank. That's the loan servicer. They're the people who kind of manage your loan. They make sure your payments are received. They answer all your mortgage questions. They send you a mortgage statement. They make sure you pay your taxes, your insurance, all that's lovely and dandy. They also are responsible for working with you when you can't make your mortgage payments. And that's where you might be right now. But here's the thing you need to understand. Because of CARE and FHFA, CARE is the CARE Act that they passed recently and FHFA's rules, they're basically telling the, the lender, the servicer, hey, if the borrower calls you and tells you they're in distress, take their word for it. They're in distress. They don't need to prove it. Take their word for it. So you can call your bank right now and say, hey bank, I don't owe you. I'll pay you in six months. And your bank will have to say, your service is going to have to say, okay. First thing you need to know is it doesn't apply to all lenders. So not all servicers are, are, are servicing for HA, the Freddie Mae, and Freddie Mac. So your loan may not even qualify for this. So that's the first thing you need to know. Next thing you need to know is you don't have to prove that, you, that you're in default. So you're good. I don't, I don't owe them any money today. I'm good to go. But here's what you need to know. When you're not making your mortgage payments, the servicer in their contract with their investor, they're making your mortgage payment. They're required by their agreement to pay your interest rates on your mortgage. And they don't like that. So they don't want to be in this position, but they're being forced to be in this position because their investor is being forced by the federal government. So it's a, it's a little trickle down effect. So at the end of this forbearance period, you're going to still owe the money. It's going to be, it's not free money. It's money you owe. You're just picking the can down the road, which is fine if you need to be. But if you don't need to be, don't play the game because you're going to be required by FHFA's rules and regulations and Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and HUD, they're going to be pushing down regulations to the servicers saying, you need to, they need to prove now that they were not, not in default, but they were in distress. And they were in distress as a result of COVID. So will you be able to prove that? If you're not going to be able to prove that, don't make the mistake of getting into this, this problem because you're going to owe the money at the end of the forbearance period. What's the end of the forbearance period? Oh, some people think that, oh, they're going to take these payments that I haven't paid. They're going to put it at the end of the loan. Well, not necessarily. That's one of the possible options. But most of them, what they're saying is at the end of the forbearance period, the three months, the six months that you didn't pay, that's when it's due. And what do you do then? Well, there's only three basic options. Oh, I don't want to kind of limit it to the three, but there are three prominent options, right? One is the lump sum payment. Let's say you had a $2,000 mortgage payment. You didn't pay it for three months. You owe them $6,000 in back pay. Plus, you owe them the fourth month. So that's $8,000 you owe them. They can say, hey, 
pay us that $6,000 plus that one month you owe today, boom, you're current, you're reinstated, everybody's happy. Problem is, if you didn't have the money three months ago, who's to say you're gonna have four months worth of payments today? Unless you had some huge windfall, it's not likely. So that's a problem. So what else can they do? Well, they can take that three month, that three months that you back due payments, make you pay your first month, that month, uh, the fourth month, now you gotta pay that current, and then, okay, pay us $500 a month, $800 a month, $1,000 a month extra to cover that back due. So that's, that's a payment plan. So that's another option. And the third and most difficult option would be a modification. So that's the hardest one to qualify for. You're gonna have to prove you were in default, and then not only do you have to prove that you were in default, but you have to prove that you're in a good position to be able to pay moving forward. So that's where it gets double complicated. I was in bad financial situation for the last three months, but now I'm all good and I can pay again. For some people, the one it's intended to help, this would be great. But for other people who are gonna to try to take advantage of this, this can be catastrophic. So I'm telling you, avoid playing with this mortgage process. And if you're having a little bit of hard time, which most people are, they're making less income, expenses haven't changed, figure out however you can to get your mortgage payment paid. Avoid getting into the mistake of ending up in a mortgage forbearance and having all this huge amount of payments clumped up together and then being at the mercy of your loan servicer to work out something that works out for you. They might not be in a position to be able to help you then. And there's a lot of confusion around how this is all gonna work out. So if at all possible, avoid getting into this mess. This should only be designed, this is only designed for and should only be used by people who really need it. So I've heard a lot of people, that's why I'm making this video, I've heard a lot of people say, ah, oh, mortgage, mortgage break, I'm gonna take a little break from my mortgage payment. Do not do that, avoid that at all costs. I'm sharing this because I've been in the business of selling foreclosed properties since 2001. I went through 2008, I saw people lose their homes. I don't wanna see it happen again, and I'm encouraging people to make the right choice. Pay your mortgage if you can, and if you can't, here's some steps to take, in, take into consideration. One is record with permission, and if it's allowed by your state law, record the conversation that you're having with the company. Number one, the servicer. That way it's clear. The documentation is, in, is, is documented, the recordings are documented. Two, make sure you review everything that's signed, or better yet, have an attorney review everything that's signed. Three, make sure you have all your documentation of everything you're paying, everything you're not paying, when you make, when, when, how you, what monies you receive, what monies go out, make sure that that whole documentation process is very, very clean so that when you apply for a mortgage relief um, or a forbearance or a repayment plan, it's all clear and documented. You're really, really on crossing the T's, dotting the I's as it relates to your payments and lack of payments, what's coming in, what's coming out. Don't co-mingle monies. Make it real clear where your, financials, where your financial status was, where your financial status is, and where you expect your financial status to be. So that's my, my advice if, again, only if, you're in a real dire straits and cannot make them. Again, I really appreciate your time. If you've heard somebody sharing that they, if you talk to somebody who thinks this is a great idea to leave their mortgage payments aside for a couple of months, I encourage you to share this video with them. Let them know it's not as simple as the news would have you make it seem. If you have any questions, comment below. We'll be glad to answer them or reach out to us. Thank you very much. Have a great day.